the Wooden Metal Workshop. I'm Kent, and I'd like to uh, welcome back all our subscribers, and if you're a new subscriber, welcome to the Wooden Metal channel. Um, I got an email relating to a post I made on a website uh, about a week and a half ago, and I had mentioned that I, the subject of the, of the thread that I posted in was uh, rolling equipment stands, and how much of your stuff equipment is mobile and how what is not mobile um, for me mobile mostly means the wood the woodworking side of the shop the metalworking side uh, I think my horizontal bandsaw is pretty much the only larger mobile piece of equipment that I have everything else is pretty much fixed position uh, of course the welders are mobile but they have to be mobile but other stuff uh, I guess Guess that's wrong. Uh, that was a real good mistake. So over on the metalworking side, I've got a uh, horizontal bandsaw. It's just a Chinese import uh, that I bought about 25 years ago. Still works pretty good. Needs another tune-up uh, to get it cutting cutting perfectly straight again, but it does a good job for rough cuts. And then uh, my metal brake uh, that you guys saw in a video not too long ago, it's on a mobile stand. Uh, the welders are, of course, on mobile stands. Um, drill press, both of them not mobile, the grinder is not mobile, of course the big vice stand and vice isn't mobile. Um, the welding table is technically mobile but you guys have seen that it's not really mobile. Uh, anything that weighs 2,000 pounds isn't really mobile. Um, but the question was about, uh, the thread was about making stuff mobile so you can store it and still get it out easily to work. And when I first built this shop, one of the first things I built was this uh, 20 I think it's 24 foot or, or 22 foot long uh, L-shaped counter. There's 22 feet that runs the depth of the shop and then there's another oh, about uh, 18 feet, 16 to 18 feet that runs on an L that uh, holds the, uh, pot, the radial arm saw. So it gives me, and then it's open beyond that too, so there's lots of, you can put lots of big stuff in either the miter saw, which is over here to my, uh, to my right, or the radial arm saw has a good eight feet each way as well. So the plan behind that is that I can cut up big stuff if I have to. You can cut the end off of a long piece. You don't have to, you know, be wiggling stuff around to get uh, good cuts. Um, but uh, one of the things I want uh, we discussed was this uh, cart here. This is my uh, um, planer. It's just a, it's a Ryobi. It's not anything really big and fancy. I bought it on sale because at the time I needed a planer uh, for a project I was doing and so I bought it, used it. Um, I used to put it on a workmate and just stick it on the counter but after a while that uh, I needed a better place, a better way to store it and uh, so what we came up with was a cart that slide that goes underneath the countertop. Now my countertop is supported every four feet approximately or is it five feet? It might be six feet. Six feet, I think, with uh, steel uh, brackets that we built up. They bolt into the wall, so you have no legs sticking down. Um, everything's clear of the floor, so it's easy to clean and easy to get to. But this stand uh, wanted storage for stuff. We wanted a stand for the uh, planer, and like I said it had to be able to slide under the workbench. Well, how are you can use a planer if it's got to slide under the workbench? Well, here's my idea, and here's what I came up with. I'm going to just roll this out here. Make sure you guys got a good view of it here. So, uh, missing a handle here, but uh, got multiple drawers. Store stuff in. The bottom drawers down here. Uh, Got the Rotozip tool and the, the uh, Craig jigs over here. Usually, this is where we have the uh, air staplers and pin nailers, um, but uh, they're actually out being used right at the moment, so they're not in their drawer. But this is how I got a planer to uh, be useful, but still be out of the way. So 
there it is in all its glory. Um, nope, didn't get the back latches latched. And it just sits on a half inch rod that goes through from side to side. Got a couple of nuts on the end of it to keep it from uh, backing out. And it just pivots around. Um, see, works really good here. Um, usually we face it this way when it's being used. Got a hose from the dust collector that comes over and collects to the dust collection port. Um, can face it this way too, um, but the hose, you have to move it way over here so the hose is long enough. But uh, honestly, it makes it nice and uh, quick to store, put away. And in a pinch, it'll work as a work surface too. It's not perfectly flat. Uh, there were some measurement issues when we were building it. And uh, so I need to put a piece of quarter inch on top of here to bring it up level with the outsides. Actually, I probably put a piece of half inch and a piece of quarter inch on each end. Um, or two layers of quarter in here, maybe masonite or something. So it, uh, but uh, never got that far. It's uh, been in use for several years and uh, comes in very handy, but yet it does slide right out of the way. So there's that one. Um, I'm gonna... So there's that one. You can see it's pretty simple construction. It's just a box, got some casters on it, and a little bit of hardware. Now, I'm gonna swing you around here and get you set up, and we'll show you the uh, router All station right, next. This is the router table that I built. The uh, top is from Rockler, lift is from, uh, from Rockler, um, and actually, I got the uh, router motor from Rockler as well. The fence uh, that came with it was okay. I built a new one for it. Same with uh, the uh, other one. Needed some drawers for storage. So over here, wrenches and the throat plates for the table. And here this one's empty at the moment. This one's got a selection of router bits in it. Same with this one, same with these other drawers. The top one on this side, actually I'm gonna drop you down here a little bit. So the top one on this side, this hides all the electronics. Right in there, it's just got a couple of cabinet clips on it. So it looks like two drawers, but it's one. In here I have some bigger router bits, uh, some of the sets. And these are just holders that I made for my, uh, made myself. Just uh, took some cedar and uh, these ones, just, uh, cut them and drilled them and cut them at an angle. So they hold, this is a panel bit set. Actually, I think this is the tongue and groove set. Um, and then uh, there's some space here for some more half inch uh, bits. One of which is right here that didn't get put away yet, so they just slide in there. Oh, maybe. There we go. This one's got some more of the bigger bits that come in cases and a little router guide. This one's getting a little heavy. It looks like the, uh, the slides might need, be, need to be adjusted. We put some more stuff in here lately. Um, in here I have my fixed base, plunge base. There's another fixed router, another plunge router, trim router, uh, more bit sets, more of the larger bits. I'll go in the bottom drawer here. So all my router stuff is together. I don't have to go looking for it. Roll it around here, move you back a little bit. Now 
that end there, you can see we have the speed control and the on and off switch for the router motor. Around some more. As you can see that. So we've got two dust ports. This one picks up right up here by the bit. This one picks up out of the uh, motor cavity. Um, you can see all the adjustment knobs on the fence. Oh. You can see all the adjustment knobs on the fence, so the fence can move in many, many different directions. Some leftovers from a routing project, it looks like. And uh, give you a quick shot of the router motor and the cover for it. So this just fits in a groove and it's got three magnets glued to the top, three washers and screws attached at the top. So and just a piece of plexiglass snaps into place. So those are, uh, this one is also sized to go underneath the countertop, but with this fence on it, it doesn't fit. But I discovered this was also sized to go underneath the countertop. But when I built this fence for it, it became too tall. But I found a great place to store it here. Um, it's out of the way, makes it easy to pull out and use, but still keeps it in a spot where you really couldn't put anything. I've got outfit table for the table saw there, outfit for the table saw there, and the eight inch joiner over here. So it just made this nice little spot for it to slide into. And uh, if you're just doing small pieces, you don't have to move it at all. If you're doing long stuff, you can just slide it forward about a foot, foot and a half. The hose is plenty long to reach that. So that's our uh, router station. Um, the only other one I have is kind of buried at the moment. It's uh, my sanding station and it's got a downdraft table on the top of it, a spindle sander, and then a spot to store my little belt sander, disc sander. It uh, also slides right under the countertop here. Pull it out, grab the hose, off this, plug it into the sanding station or a hose off one of the other connections. And uh, so you have a downdraft table for, for hand sanding. Spindle sander has a dust pickup, so it can, it'll do the spindle sander. And this one has its dust pickup on the end, so you can plug the hose in there if you need to. Uh, those fine dusts, they, they really uh, are kind of annoying. But uh, so we do our best to contain them as much as we can in the shop. And uh, so that's my. Uh, portable or movable uh, workstations and they all store out of the way and uh, allow the workflow to work really well because um, usually you don't have you know the planer out and the sanding station out at the same time or and um, we do have a big table in here at the moment it's on wheels it rolls around pretty nice and it's uh, it's seven four by seven and uh, got a bottom shelf on it that's that's full of other equipment too um, this table is going to go be going away, actually going to be moving outside, um, get covered up with a tarp, be used out there when we need to we can do some assembly stuff out there for, for and work out there. But uh, this will give us uh, a place to put a uh, true woodworking bench. So see you next time. If you like what you saw today, uh, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any comments, questions or concerns, please leave them in the comment section. And uh, Thanks for watching.